number 274. Let us stand and sing together. 274. Hear the blessed Savior calling thee a prayer. All ye have delayed, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I your love will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. I come unto me. Dragging names of doubt and floating down the stairs. I do an only feeling, struggle in your breath. Bring your heart to Jesus, He will give you rest. Come unto me. Stress with me, Christ will sanctify you if you want it. be seated, the choir singing after all.
Amen. Did you enjoy that? Say amen. Amen. As the choir comes down, let's all stand together, turn around and fellowship. Teenagers, as soon as the choir is out, you may make your way to the choir loft. All right, you may be seated. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Good to see you in the Lord's house. And looking forward to what God has in store for us. Just a few announcements before the teen choir will be singing. Saturday morning visitation, 10 a.m. Keep that in mind. And I hope you'll be out there this Saturday. Uh, tithing envelopes are still in the back. Is that correct, Miss Connie? Okay. Still in the back. Also, if you did not, if you not get a mug or a Bible reading calendar or a church calendar, if you'd please, uh, as you go out the back, uh, Brother Frederick will have someone back there to get you one. So please keep that in mind. That's one per family. We're asking just to make sure everybody gets one. Obviously, the Bible reading calendars, if you can read, uh, you can have one. Amen. And uh, good to see you in the Lord's house. I believe that's all. The announcements, Christ for Christ Banquet, Saturday, January the 5th. And, of course, the preview on Friday, 5 to 7. So keep that in mind. And a lot of neat things. And uh, it's a great cause. Amen. And uh, Brother Venable, a tremendous uh, asset to our church and just honored uh, to have him here. And uh, so we certainly want to support him and the ministry and show our support. And I trust you'll be out on Saturday. And the meal will be served, and, and most of you from here uh, know how that banquet goes. And uh, there'll be great food, great fellowship, just a good time together. And the items uh, to be um, uh, auctioned off, I guess is how they do it, silent auction, most of them. And if you go by Friday, you don't have to wait, amen? You just get them, praise the Lord, after you pay, amen. And I know that'll be a great time. All right, Brother Broad Street, good to see you and your wife tonight. Good to have them and our missionaries to Canada. And uh, went to Bible college here, amen, and uh, several years ago, amen, and good to have them with us tonight, and I want to hear from the teen choir at this time, you pray for them, that God would bless them, and I know he'll bless us for listening, amen, amen.
to purchase my redemption. When you broke sin's power and set my spirit free, I'm amazed that you love me. I'm amazed how you care through your precious blood. I found pardon, and my sins are washed. They're all washed away. All my sins are washed away. It's true. stronger than my weakness and your ears are open every time I pray no one else has ever cared for me like you Lord other friends have never been as close to me I'm not afraid to face the problems of tomorrow
Enjoy that. Say amen. 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 Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Get better every time. Amen. Great. Tremendous. Fellas, go ahead and come this time if you would. We'll receive our offering tonight and enjoy the opportunity we have to give. And uh, thank you. We had a a great 2012. And as far as our giving goes, every area was was up. And we thank the Lord for it. Uh, Giving, uh, memberships, folks joining, and uh, say baptized. All that was great, and I thank the Lord for it. And we'll never take it for granted, God's blessings. And God's so good to us, and we thank the Lord for it. All right, one more. He's coming. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. All right, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Philip, you want to lead us in prayer tonight? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for the opportunity to, to come to your church, your house, and worship you, Father. And thank you for the time that you let that you uh, gave us, that you uh, let us to be able to sing for your glory. And pray that you'll just be with us often and bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Have your Bibles ready, and the first Wednesday of every month, uh, the Teen Choir sings by the Fredericks Preaches, and uh, you know I'm glad that uh, I'm glad it is it is such that um, we have Brother Fredericks here, and I'm, I'm thankful that, that uh, to have him preach every Wednesday once a, once a month, and it's tremendous. And uh, you know I need preaching too. Amen. Amen. I'll say amen for you. Amen. And uh, it's nothing like, you know, I listen to it on CD and tape and internet and all that, but it's nothing like live and in person. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that we can certainly have someone out in the pulpit to do that, and it's a great blessing to me. And uh, not worry about, uh, you know, what he's going to say, if it's going to be doctrinally right. And uh, now he may, he may have a, a joke or something that we did not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. Just joking. Uh, I'm glad we can uh, rest assured that we're going to hear from God's Word tonight, and that's such a blessing. And let's bow for prayer, and we'll have a song where the Fredericks will come and speak to us. Father, we thank you 
for the opportunity we have to be here tonight. I pray you'll bless now the reading and preaching of your, of your word. And Lord, I pray that you bless this song now. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you use it. And God, just help us to focus on you tonight. And God, as we enter this new year, and I look forward to all that you're going to do and want to do, I pray that we would be obedient hearers from the very beginning of this year, and not only here, but to do your word. God, help us, I pray, as we hear it to do it, to be obedient to thy word. And we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, teenagers, and uh, you enjoyed that, say amen. And if you didn't enjoy it, say amen. Boy, that was good. And uh, that song, I remember when you first heard that on a CD, it was on repeat mode, and we were listening and listening, and my kids were singing. I tried to, but they were singing, and then we always listen to my wife when she sings, because we always give her a hard time, because sometimes she makes up words, you know, and that, we all do that, I'm sure, but for a while she was singing, I'm a prisoner of war, dun, dun, dun. we're like... Honey, that's not the POW song. It's a prisoner of hope. And uh, so every time we hear that, my wife probably chuckles or something. But it's good to be a prisoner of hope. Free to go. But by choice, we're here tonight. And uh, thank God for that. If you want to turn, you can to uh, John chapter number 9. John chapter number 9. As you're turning, let me quickly say, um, <clears throat> in the back, do pick up your mugs, your calendars, and your Bible reading schedules. And those of you who do have calendars, please look at them, especially a few uh, uh, particular groups of people. We are having something this year we call Parents of Teens Meetings. We are having four of these, one every three months. It's an informative meeting. It'll give you the next three months calendar. And then some uh, thoughts, some ideas on parenting and tips of things of that nature. So check those out in your calendar. There's one um, January 13th, um, let's see, April 14th, and then July 21st, and October 20th. We'll have them on Sunday evenings after the evening service. We'll go over to the fellowship hall, have a quick meeting while your kids are down in the gym, and then we'll do that. Then <clears throat> we'll also have uh, Sunday school teachers and workers meetings. 
We're having these every other month beginning on uh, February. It'll be on the first Wednesday night of the month. So please check your calendar again. It is on there. And if you can make note of that, we'll go over some things, give you some stats and some ideas. And that way we have uh, open lines of communication. If you need things in your rooms, you can see myself or Brother Jimmy. Those are prime times. You can call the office anytime. But just know when you have those two meetings, we can always ask, are there any uh, things we need to be made aware of? It's, how's the chair situation? Anything? So those would be great meetings to have. Check your calendar for that. Um, do want to remind parents and uh, teenagers, we've announced this, that on January 19th, two Saturdays from today, we will be singing for Grapevine Baptist Church. We're having a youth meeting, and we'll do a combo choir. Our choir will sing, and then they've asked me to preach. And so I told the teenagers if they want to leave after they sing, they can do that. And, uh, but um, we need to be there at 4, and so we'll leave here at 3.30. We'll uh, meet there at 4, have combo choir practice. We have a prayer meeting at 445. Service starts at 5 p.m., and then we'll be home. I'll have a sign-up sheet that you could sign up so we know how many folks are going. Bus will leave here at 330. And then, again, these parents of teens meetings, please, parents, if both of you can't make it, one, make it. Again, the information will be needful and helpful. And uh, things like uh, this year we're having our uh, youth rally in March. That will be March 21 and 22, Friday night, Saturday night meeting. And I'd like to have many parents here if you could help out. We want to provide meals each night. So instead of just saying, Miss Peggy, get her done, I'd like to see if we can get some volunteers to help in her kitchen and get a lot of that taken care of. So we'll go over those in those meetings. And I hope you're having a great year. Uh, it's January 3rd. How's your New Year's resolutions coming? I hope they're going well. And I know some people have the mindset of, well, why even make them? I keep falling short, so I'm just not going to. I'm going to resolve not to have a New Year's resolution. But uh, I don't know who uh, coined the phrase, but I've heard it many times. Boy, shoot, aim for the moon even if you miss and hit the streetlight. I mean, math some sort of goal, because even if you make a little bit of progress the first few weeks and you wind up stopping, at least you made that progress in January. And so let's be careful to be mindful of that. Um, I don't know how many of you remember Alice in Wonderland, do you? Uh, remember she was down there and she came to that fork in the road? Brother Jeff, I'm sure you remember this. And that cat was there, and uh, he said, can I help you? Where do you want to go? She goes, well, which way should I go? He goes, where do you want to go? She goes, I'm not sure where I'm going. She goes, then he replies, well, then does it matter which way you take? And uh, he was basically saying, if you don't know where you're going, does it really matter what choice you need to make today? And that's why these goals or resolutions are important, because if you have no goal, then what choices do you have to make in everyday living for our Lord and Savior? So I want to urge and encourage many of you, uh, what man of you would, taking thought for his life, would build a barn without counting the cost beforehand? And so let's be sure to do that this year. With that in mind, um, we're in John chapter 9. I'll be real quick. I'm right into the message, and we'll be done accordingly, so no worries. I've trimmed all my messages for 2013, especially with these Sunday school meetings being on the Wednesday that I'm preaching because I want to get you home in time and make sure we don't abuse that. But we're in John chapter 9, and uh, this here is a time where Jesus heals a blind man. One of several miracles he does, we taught on these in my Sunday school class, taught on 30 miracles uh, uh, over the course of several months. But in verse 17, Jesus healed, but here they didn't mind the healing. They didn't like it on the Sabbath days, the fact that he healed. <clears throat> so the Pharisees are chasing after him, trying to get the whole story so they can accuse Christ. So in verse 17 of chapter 9 of John, the Bible says, They say unto the blind man again, Why sayest thou of him, uh, what sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? And the man responded, he said, he's a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received the sight. So they said, well, this must be some trick. You weren't really blind, right? So where's your mom and dad? So now they got the parents involved, verse 12, uh, 19. And they asked them, saying, is this your son whom ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. So the parents now may be nervous that the folks are coming. All right, what's your answer? Is this a problem? Uh, ask him, you know, shifting the blame there, so to say. Verse 22, uh, verse 21, by what means he now seeth, we know not. Verse 22, these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. 
Therefore said his parents, He is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, this is the blind man speaking, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that, whereas I was blind, now I see. <laughs> he said, I don't know if he was a prophet. I don't know if he was a televangelist. I don't know if he was a magician. I don't know if he was a pharmacist. I know this. I once was blind, and I can see. I know that much. And in this day and age of great messages and, and fun titles and alliterated points with subpoints that are even more alliterated than the main points, I'm just asking you tonight not to pay close attention to an outline, but just to think on one thing. This man said, one thing I know, I once was blind, but now I see. And so for 2013, here's my question to you, do you know one thing? You see, I know Clint Fredericks, and I tried reading the nine, page, nine pages on the Internet on Fox News about this uh, bill that Congress signed, and I tried my best to understand it, and I don't know if I'm afraid of the fiscal cliff or if I want to go over the fiscal cliff, and, and all that stuff that happens, I try to study and try to learn, but I really don't know a whole lot about it. But I know this, on June 29th, I once was blind, 1990, but now I see. Uh, I don't know much about financing and, and going into to how to get loans and your APR accrued over a 30-year mortgage and, and really how much you're paying on principal. I mean, I kind of understand it. I really don't know it, but I do know this, I once was blind and now I see. I don't really understand a lot of things sometimes. I, I don't know why we call apartment buildings apartments when all those buildings are stuck together. I don't know why we park on driveways and drive on parkways. And I really don't know why there's the ATM machine has braille things on the numbers at the drive-up teller. <laughs> I don't understand that, but I know this. I once was lost. Now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Hey, 2013, I got one question for you. Do you know if you were to die today that you'd go to heaven? Now, don't be like these folks that we knock on their doors on Saturday and say something like this. Well, I'm in church tonight, aren't I? That's not the question. The question isn't where's your Wednesday attendance or your Sunday attendance. The question is where is your eternal attendance going to be? Do you know one thing? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Well, Brother Clint, you're talking to Freedom Baptist Church. You're talking to folks, and I remember when so-and-so, and I walked the aisle, and so-and-so was preaching, and I was in junior church, and I was in Mama's bedroom, and I was in, that's great. Okay, well, then if you know one thing, let's, let's graduate from that. Let's take one step from knowing one thing. Let's turn to Psalm chapter 27, shall we? Psalm chapter 27 and verse number 4. Again, not, 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 not a great outline, not nothing, but we just said, do you know one thing? And now we're going to ask this in Psalm chapter 27, if I can find it. It's in the Old Testament, right? Psalm chapter 27, verse number 4. We're talking about one thing tonight. And we saw in John 9, we saw knowing one thing. Do you know for certain you'd spend eternity in heaven? Psalm 27, 4 says this, One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. You know, after you know one thing, can I tell you what should happen in the life of a Christian? You should start to desire one thing. And it's not just to be in church, as the psalmist wrote here. He wanted to be in the temple, but he wanted to inquire in the temple. He wanted to be taught. He wanted to learn. He, he really, in a sense, wanted to change his desires. And wouldn't every Christian want to do that? Isn't that the battle we have all of our days of our lives? We Once again, I faced Satan this morning, and I battled him all the day long. And man, it's another battle. It's another temptation. But greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And you can overcome that if you change your desires. I'd like to change my desires of rooting for a football team. I'm a cowboy fan, and I couldn't wait to get home, Brother Willard. Sunday night, here we go. Woo, boy, you were texting back and forth. We were having a good time. But the third quarter, I got sick and tired of texting. 
Once they got down 14 points, I said, you know, then he texted me again, uh, Brother Clint, did you go to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm still going to root for him. I figure there's worse things that could happen. I could be a Cubs fan, right, you know. But you know what? We, if we're not careful, we get, get into this mindset of just, well, I just can't overcome that because of this. I just can't. No, no, the reason you can't overcome it is because you feed that appetite of desire and that vice that you battle, whether it's drink, whether it's smoke, whether it's this, whether it's that, whatever it is that you have. And preacher mentioned how big social media is getting in the lifestyles of every individual these days. If that's your vice, I tell you what, the more you feed it, the more difficult it's going to be. You do realize you can't change your desires. You change your desires. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things become new. This principle is awesome to me if you think about it. I love how that passage of Scripture was written to Christians. And he didn't say, if he wasn't preaching salvation, Christ in you, the hope of glory is salvation. He was preaching on, on, on growth. The, the church at Corinth had battled fornication and other bad things of that nature. And he says, you guys need to get back in Christ. You need to get back to the main thing. And if any man be in Christ, he can become a new, new creature. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. But the desires change after you delight yourself in God. You see, you don't need to necessarily stop the external vice that you're doing. Follow me. You need to get in Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And when I get in this Word, I am getting in Christ. And when I read this Word of God, it, as the book of James says, is like a mirror and reveals to me, like the mirror does in the morning, that maybe I need to pull a few nose hairs. Too much information, but I'm just saying, maybe in the mirror it says I need to get this one piece of hair, this one right here i got to pull with a tweezer. It's not with the rest of the group. It's all by itself. It looks funky. got to pull it out. And if I didn't have the mirror, we wouldn't know that. Teenagers, right? Without the mirror, you wouldn't know about that one pimple that's coming out right above the eyebrow, the one right under here by the nose. It's hard to get. You squeeze, it flashes on the mirror. Hey, I understand. We need the mirror, but hey, even more so, we need the mirror of the Word of God in our lives. Well, you know, I know you think that's bad, but you know, I just don't think that's bad. Hey, let me ask you this. What does God think? See, when you start to get around God more, You don't need someone to tell you what's right and wrong. Because you spend time with the Lord and you delight yourself in the things of the Lord and you start getting more of God and you start to go, ooh, I don't think you like that, do you? I don't have to call Jimmy Smith and go, hey, Jimmy, um, do you think it'd be okay? I mean, you know, I've been a member there now for almost two years and I was planning on maybe going, what do you think? Well, if, if, if you need that advice... I hope you'll take the answer he gives you. Some of us just call people and find and tell we find someone who agrees with us. Hey, what do you think? Oh, you would do that? Oh, okay. Hey, what do you think? Oh, you would do that? Oh, okay. Hey, what do you Oh, yeah, you would do what I do? Oh, great. Yeah, I knew I could count. And we just look for someone to agree with us. Why don't you find out what God says? Change your desires. Change your desire. Desire one thing. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Okay, well, then get beyond knowledge and start to change your desires. Desire one thing, to inquire of the temple, to know more of God this year. One thing I've done, Brother Jimmy, you run. We like to jog. Brother Chris, you jog. I I normally have a set of songs I've put together, and I know if I'm running for 40 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour or whatnot, I, I put certain, there's just something about when you're tired, and you got that last half mile, and then the Rocky song pumps up, you know, bum, 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 bum. Man, all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm not tired. Yeah, we got to finish. And you just go, there's but I changed something this year. You know what? Remember that app you told me about, the Bible, and it's got the dramatized version? I listen to the Bible now when I run. It's not real motivating, you know, exercise-wise, but I'll tell you what, it has changed. I've learned some things on my jogs. Can I tell you, preacher, you've known this, I bet, I, but I just realized this week in my jogging that Enoch, there's two of them. 
I thought Enoch was like a way of God saying to Cain, because Cain had a son named Enoch, was, Cain, you messed up, but I'm the God of a second chance, and now your son is Enoch, and Enoch walked with the Lord and was not. He never died. But man, my theology was off for all these years. And if afterwards I'm a preacher, I will, but this year <laughs> I heard that Seth had a son named Enoch, and the Christ line went through Enoch and Methuselah and all them through Seth the child after Cain and Abel, and all of a sudden it hit me as I was running away. I stopped running. I messed up my pace, Matthew. I had the worst pace that day. I just stopped running. Oh, my goodness. I'm an idiot. (laughs) But I'm glad I learned it. All these years, I sat in a Sunday school class where the teacher put a, on the flannel graph, and it showed Noah on the ark and a bird coming back with a big branch in its mouth. Oh, oh, yeah. I thought... But you know what? The Bible doesn't say it's an olive branch. It was a leaf plucked off the olive. All of a sudden, man, I tell you what, I'm excited about my Bible reading. Because I'm wondering, what else am I wrong? Let's see, I, I do know for sure you have to trust Christ as your personal Savior, and there's no other way to have I know that. But I'm so ex- I wake up every morning and say, man, the blessings of God, he loadeth us up daily. I can't wait for another scoop tomorrow. I really can't. And can I say that? I know if you're a new Christian or been saved 40 years, maybe it may work you up to get, but I'm telling you, let God change your desire one thing in 2013. I say to anybody in here, if you don't know for certain where you spend in turn, would you know one thing? You can know that you were blind and you can now see. You can know that you were lost and you were found. You can know for sure that you're spending eternity in heaven. Can I say in 2013, you can know... Man, no, no, not just know one thing, but desire one thing. Desire Christ, desire Christ, desire Christ. There were people in the Bible who changed their desires. There was a woman at the well who met Jesus Christ, a woman of the night. The, one, hey, the man that you're with is not your husband, and you've been with seven men. Hey, all of a sudden, she winds up being one of the greatest soul winners in the New Testament by getting saved and saying, come see a man who told me ever so whatsoever I've done. Her desires changed. How about Saul, a Christian killer whose desires changed after salvation and became the Apostle Paul? Zacchaeus, the chief of publicans. And all of a sudden, he winds up uh, 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 taking care, getting saved, and paying back double. How about the maniac of Gadara who was seated and clothed and in his right mind? I tell you, you can, you can change. You've got to delight yourself in the Lord. You've got to get in the book. You've got to get in the book. But if you don't know one thing, you don't desire one thing, I pray you will know one thing. And as you grow in your Christian life, you then will desire one thing. But let me tell you something, that desire is going to turn into action. It, it, it can't, you can't just get all this stuff from God and just sit there. It's going to move you to do something. And then, so let's turn to Philippians real quick. Philippians chapter 3. And we'll finish up right here in Philippians It's all those shuns book, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, right after Corinthians. And so we're in Philippians. Philippians chapter number 3, beginning in verse 10. And I like how this starts off because it goes perfectly what we've already talked about. Know one thing, desire one thing. In verse 10 it says this, that I may, what's the next word? Know him. (laughs) That's where it starts, folks. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Knowing one thing should spur you to desire one thing, and that desire of one thing should motivate you to do one thing. 
Hey, Freedom Baptist Church, let the year 2013 be the year that you stepped out and did something for Christ. I mean, not just, well, I always do this, and every February I always do this, and every March I do this, but maybe just one more thing you can add to that. Because your love for God is such, and because you desire Him so much, and, and because you've desired Him, He has given unto you and opened your eyes that you can see certain things, and, and man, you're just so full, you, you, you just got to get it out. You got to do something. And do something. As a new Christian, I don't know what it is, but I think we should strive to be the best whatever it is we can be in 2013 because of the fact of we know we're on our way to heaven, we desire the things of Christ, and that should motivate us, that should help us to want to be the best employee we could possibly be. That should motivate us to be the best student we can be in high school, in elementary, in college, wherever we attend, to be the best student, to give my best effort. It ought to motivate us to be the best spouse you can be in 2013. I don't know about you, but man, I slap myself in the face and can't tell myself all the time, I can be a better husband, I can be a better husband. I've been trying some things out on the wife to be a better husband. It embarrasses my kids. Oh, that's it, we're out of here. You're doing that? Okay, all right, all right, all right. But you know what? I've realized, that, look, none of us have arrived. And Brother Jerry and Miss, boy, you've been married over 50 years. And, and uh, boy, I go visiting with him often. And, boy, he tells me how hard it is. No, I'm just joking. And, man, we, I, I, I pick his brain. I try to get ideas. And he says the best thing to do is don't wake her up when she's napping. And, uh, man, that's good news, Amen. Every time I'm nice to my wife, she always replies, you preachers get this? Boy, you do something nice to your wife. She's like, are you preaching on marriage? You know, like almost we have to practice before we preach it. You know, like, yeah, it did work in my house. But, but I know this. I want to be a better husband in 2013. And I hope all of you men out here want to be a better husband to your own wife in 2013. I want to be a better child, young person. Be a better child to your mom and dad, a son and a daughter. May this be the best year. I'm not trying to scare you, but we're not guaranteed the whole year. Of the funerals we did, preacher, we had them all from the gray-haired great-grandmas to a shoebox and everything in between last year. Let's be the best we can be in 2013. Let's be the best parent, mom and dad. This isn't our parents of teens meeting, but I was doing some research and came across as parents. I want to remind you, before we start pointing fingers at the church, and boy, if the church would do this, my kid would be better and he'd do this. But let me remind you that there are 168 hours in a week. And if the average kid slept seven hours, (laughs) if, So I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, all right? If they went to bed at 10 a.m. and woke up at 6, um, that'd be uh, seven hours a night, so that would leave 119 hours left in the week. Now, follow me here. If they came to church every service, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, that's six and a half hours, approximately, okay? Approximately. They'll go to school 35 hours in the week. They'll be around their friends, whether on the phone or texting at night, hanging at their house, going to the mall. They'll be around them for 15 hours a week. They'll do extracurricular activity for about 12 hours in a week. And they will be around their mom and dad for 50 hours in the week. Now, you listen carefully. Church takes up 5%. Extracurricular activity takes up 10%. Friends take up 13%. School takes up 30%. Home and family take up 42%. Before you start getting mad at God and mad at the church for how your son or daughter is turning out, be careful pointing that one finger because there's three more pointing right back at us, Mom and Dad. If you're reading through your Bible reading schedule, wait till you get to Deuteronomy. And it admonishes the parents, and thou shalt teach them when thou sittest down, and when thou layest down, and when thou risest up, and it shall be written as the frontlets on their eyelids, and they should do this. It's mom and dad, it's our responsibility to teach and train our young people about the things of God. It's the church's part to reinforce, hopefully, what they're already learning at home. 2013, may it be the year where the best parent we could possibly be. Well, I just want to be their friend. 
They got enough of those. Be their guider. Be their counselor. Be their prayer warrior. Be the one that loves them unconditionally. Be the one that teaches them. Be the one that instructs them. Be the one that communicates with them. They got plenty of friends. Yeah, but they just don't understand. I know, it's because they're teenagers. I don't understand why they watch Phineas and Ferb either, but I'm just saying they're teenagers. There's some things we won't understand, but you better do the things you do understand, and that is they need a mom and dad. I hope, it, well, I know I'm on my way to heaven. Okay, well, then pastor your home, Daddy. Pastor that home, Mama. And boy, make sure those kids learn about God. So know one thing. Desire one thing. Do one thing. I'm asking you moms, dads, step-parents, step-grandparents uh, and grandmas, foster parents, help take time to teach and train your child. I'm asking us to be the best child we could be, the best spouse we could be, the best student we could be, the best employee we could be, the best church member we could be. The best church member you could be. Don't just be a church member who sits, hours, and soaks. Try to find some area you could do something. Is my mother-in-law here? Okay, good. I might say something nice about her. Um, strike, uh, turn the DVD. Pl- no, I'm just joking. Um, I, I, w- I was in here this afternoon, and, and I saw my mother-in-law, and I'm sure it was uh, uh, for some, something, but, but she was over. Miss Peggy was giving her instructions. Here's the cards. I said, what are you doing? She goes, well, I just came to help out a little bit, and I thought I'd help Miss Peggy clean the bathrooms a little bit. I was like, man. So, Miss Peggy, tell me how you did it. I'll have her come to our house, give my wife a break, and let her know. I'm just teasing. And uh, can I tell you what? That's a Christian, a church member, who just said, you know what? And thank God for this. She ain't going to drive any of our buses. Praise God. <laughs> Especially for youth activity. She ain't going to drive any of those buses. Brother Milton, she wouldn't know what to do. Where'd Brother Milton go? He's part. Brother Milton! She wouldn't know what to do if she looked under the hood. But she can clean a bathroom. I know she can clean because she taught a daughter to clean real well, too. And her grandkids probably hate the fact that her daughter is so good at cleaning. She gets on her nerves. Church member, what area can you help out in? Can you help maybe stand in the hallway and make sure there's order going on? Can you stand at a back door and greet people as they come in? Mrs. White, someone told on you. I heard you were in charge of enlisting some new door ushers back there this past weekend. And boy, she said, uh, uh, Miss Christy, your son, boy, he was out there at a door back there just holding the door open. And uh, I forgot some of the other boys, but I know one other boy that was out there was Luke White. Now, I don't know if this was teaching and training from Grandma or just a, an opportunity to serve, boys. Here you go. And they were holding them doors open. I could just picture Luke out there, a little snotty. Hi. 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 Now, listen to me. Five, six, seven, eight-year-old boys could be door ushers. If 183-year-old women can clean bathrooms, <laughs> my mother-in-law, Miss Peggy, not you. No. <laughs> there goes my macaroni and cheese. Whew. There's something you can do. There's something you could do. But can I just say this? Here's the question we should ask all of ourselves tonight. What can I do to be the best Christian I can be? Could you listen to me? If your goal is to be the best Christian you can be, it's amazing how God does this. Everything else just falls into place. Listen to me. If you try to be the best Christian you can be, I guarantee you'll be the best husband you can be. Young person, if you try to be the best Christian you can be and try to live by biblical principles, moms and, mom and dad's rules are nothing. I'm not saying God's a taskmaster, but I'm saying if you can learn to delight in the Lord, law of the Lord, mom and dad's rules are nothing. Let's be the best Christian we could be. Tonight I'm asking, do you know one thing? Do you desire one thing? Maybe you need to do one thing. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. And as we finish up tonight, I'll just simply open the invitation in just a second when the piano starts to play. And 
I'm going to invite anybody here at this building tonight, if you want to come forward at the first service of 2013, and maybe come apart and tell God that this is the year that I'm going to do something. I want to do more in 2013 than I've ever done. Maybe you're doing that, or maybe you haven't done something, because can I say this? Maybe you don't desire something. Maybe you can't wait until your favorite TV show comes on and you desire things of that nature more than you do. Like the psalmist said when he wrote, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Maybe your desires need to change. You know how you change your desires? Get in the word of God. Be faithful, be dedicated, and your desires can change. Maybe doing something, doing one thing is far beyond. Maybe desiring is not even in the mentality because you don't know one thing. Maybe you need to make sure and come forward tonight. And I'd love to take the Bible and show you how you can know for sure you're spending your eternity in heaven. Whatever the case may be, in just a second we'll start the invitation. I'd like to invite each and every person to do business with God. Our Father in heaven, the message has been preached, the word of God has been opened, and as we looked at scripture verses, we saw knowing one thing. We saw desiring one thing. We saw doing one thing. God, whatever the progressive step is that we need to take, may we do it as Christians to make 2013 the best year in our spiritual lives. Help now is my prayer. If there's anyone here who doesn't know where they spend eternity, or maybe there's someone who's gone wayward, they need to come back and start to fix their desires. Maybe there's someone who's just been sitting, 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 sitting. They say, you know what, I'm going to do something this year. I'm going to call the church office and find out what is there I could do. I only got a few minutes a week. I only get, I get here early before the service. I stay late. Maybe I can do something. May we be busy about the Father's business is my prayer. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Let's stand to our feet. The piano is playing. The invitation's open. And if you need to do business with God, I invite you to come forward. And particularly if you do not know for sure where you'd spend eternity, that's the most important thing. Don't get service ahead of obedience. We must obey the word of God. Jesus said in John 14, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Would you come? Do you know him? Do you know him? Maybe you need to change your desires. Boy, I encourage you, get that Bible reading schedule. But what if I don't read through it the whole year? Just read what you can every day and do as much as you can and let God speak to you through his word. Or maybe it's do one thing. Maybe you could join the choir. Maybe you could help organize the choir notebooks for Brother Roy. Maybe you could help in the junior church. Maybe you could help in the children's church. Maybe you could help in the nurseries. Find some area in which you could do and live out that faith that you speak of so often. God speaking to you. Come on tonight. What is it he's laid on your heart? What's the next step God's laid on you to do? Certainly God's spoken to you about something. Would you act on it tonight? Get it settled. If you're here and you don't know Christ, get it settled tonight. If you're here and you're just waiting, God's probably already told you the next step for you. He's already told you what he wants you to do. Why not do it tonight, would you? Just come and get it settled. Are you desiring the right things? How's your Bible reading? Your devotional life? You know, we make commitments to everything and for everything. It'd be a good thing to make a commitment to reading and praying every day. God, help us to do it. For those of you who...